Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we'll be going over the top 3 clean energy ETFs to buy right now and in 2022. iClean, also known as iShares Global Clean Energy. The iShares Global Clean Energy ETF seeks to track the results of an index composed of global equities in the clean energy sector. Right now iClean holds 76 stocks with top holdings in names that you might have heard of such as Emphase Energy, Plug Power and Solar Edge Technologies. These top 10 holdings actually make up 50% of the whole entire portfolio, which also make, makes this a bit of a riskier investment. iClean is well diversified over pretty much all the clean energy sectors, but the sectors that iClean holds the most of are electric utilities, semiconductor equipment and electrical components and equipment. iClean is also the only ETF on this list that says that it invests in global equities with top geographics in the United States, Denmark and China. This ETF is by far the most diversified when it comes to geographics. iClean has an average yearly return over the past 10 years of 12.75%. That means that if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago, that money would now be worth around $20,000. And that of course takes into account the yearly dividends of 1% and the expense ratio of 0.42%. Moving on to number two on the list, we have PB. W, also known as Invesco Wilder Hill Clean Energy ETF. PB tracks a modified equal weighted index of companies involved in cleaner energy sources or energy conservation. PBW has a portfolio of 73 stocks with top holdings in companies that you might recognize such as Emphase Energy, Plug Power and Tesla. One thing that makes this ETF stand out is that the top 10 holdings only make up 20% of the entire portfolio, which means that their top holdings are much, much smaller. This of course makes the ETF a lot less risky. The top 10 sectors are a bit less diversified. We have renewable energy equipment and services that is 28% of the entire portfolio and auto and truck manufacturers is laying at 10.5%. PBW is much more diversified when it comes to their holdings but the sectors that they're in are a bit more cluttered together. So that is something uh, that you'll have to keep in mind when determining how risky this investment is. The top geographics for PBW is the United States, China and Canada. PBW's average yearly return over the past 10 years has been 13.62%. That means that if you invested $10,000 10 years ago, that investment would now be worth 21% thousand dollars and that of course takes into account the ETF's 1% dividends and the expense ratio of 0.61%. The expense ratio that you have to pay uh, on PBW is pretty high but then again it is covered by the yearly dividends. The next ETF on the list is QCLN also known as First Trust Nasdaq Clean Edge Green Energy Index Fund. Wow, that's a, that's a long name. That is why uh, it's very handy to use the ticker symbols. QCLN tracks a market cap weighted index of US listed firms involved in clean energy. Right now, QCLN holds 61 stocks with top holdings in companies that you might recognize Tesla, Emphase Energy, NEO, Plug Power and First Solar. These top 10 holdings make up 58% of the entire portfolio and that of course adds some more risk to the equation. The top sectors for QCLN are renewable energy equipment, automobiles and semiconductors. The top geographics of this ETF is the United States, China and Canada. Of course weighted mostly uh, in US stocks as it also says in the description. QCLN has an average yearly return over the past 10 years of 22.29%. This is by far the highest yearly return on any ETF on this list and that also means that if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago that investment would now be worth around $50 thousand dollars and that is of course taking into account the one percent yearly dividends and the expense ratio of 0.6 percent. QCLN is the number one on this list because it has grown so rapidly over the past 10 years. It invests in a wide variety of sectors and all in all I think the companies that they're investing in are just great great companies. So the downside to this ETF is definitely that their top holdings are so heavy heavy weighted. Needless to say this ETF has just performed so well over the past 10 years that it takes the number one spot 